Recipes for technical trading success in Cook's Kitchen. Software is on fire, but are the valuations worth it? We're going to dive in. I'm going to make the argument that for long-term investors, you want to stay with software. Let's look at some of the euphoria that's going on first. I'm going to show you a lot of charts. Uh, first, we'll just look at an index. This is actually an ETF, IGV, which is based on the uh, S&P North American Tech Software ETF, or uh, index, rather. So uh, IGV, uh, this is a two- or three-year chart. Um, you can see, look at this. This thing has never even touched its 200-day moving average and uh, just made new highs in the past few days here. What's driving it? Well, a lot of components. Obviously, Microsoft. How about Square? Let's look at Square. And I'm using uh, stock charts because they've got some great tools here. We're going to see some quick comparison charts. But there's Square launching from... 70 to almost 90 this month. Um, just a beautiful run. What else is working in software? Salesforce. There it is. Uh, made new highs above 155, I think. It's pulled back a little bit. And uh, just an incredible run. I'll tell you a story in a second here about that. After we look at Adobe. All right, so there's Adobe, same thing. All right, um, Adobe and Salesforce are a sore spot with me because I left them behind in the past six months to a year when their stocks just weren't moving at all. I you know, couldn't get any traction. The valuations were a little rich. Yeah, they could grow into their valuations, and now the stocks are like 70% higher than where I let them go. So that's a definite sore spot. And when I looked at other software to get back into, I traded Square a little bit, but you're always worried about the valuations, whereas you know, semiconductors seem cheap. And that was the mind trick that software did to investors. Uh, if you're familiar with Andreessen Horowitz, the uh, venture capital firm, Mark Andreessen, he has said for years, software is eating the world. And there's a reason he says that. Let's go back to the charts. I want to show you a comparison chart of, we're going to look at the IGV here, the, uh, the software index is the red line versus the QQQs versus the, uh, the semis, the Philadelphia Semiconductor Index in green, and then the S&P is the pink line down here at the bottom. This is, a one, this is the past year, so this is a one-year look back, and you can see how software has trounced the semis uh, and the QQQ, um, which is hard to believe because Amazon is not in the software index and Amazon is doubled, but Amazon is in the QQQs. Um, and, you know, semis trying to hang tough. They've, they've had a, a better full year than the S&P. Uh, what else do I want to show? Oh, let's talk about, uh, let's talk about Amazon, Google, and even Apple. Are they software companies? Well, they're not in, they're, they're not in a uh, software industry, but they are software companies, obviously. Everything Amazon does, uh, from e-commerce to the cloud to uh, innovations that they drive in commerce, is related to software. Obviously, Google. Um, and Apple, I mean, hardware company, but where would they be without their software innovation? So, Again, the theme is software is eating the world, and it will continue to do so. Yeah, it's hard to trade these stocks um, you know, at, at these valuations, but for long-term investors who've stuck with them, uh, they're getting a huge payday now here on this surge. All right, what else do I want to show you? So, uh, by the way, Square trading at 190 times. Um, what's, in, what's in this uh, IGV, which is basically the S&P uh, North American Tech Software ETF, uh, Index. Uh, they used to have a Dow Jones Software Index that I don't think is followed much anymore. But here you can see, you've got Salesforce, Microsoft, Adobe, Oracle, Activision Blizzard Gaming, uh, Intuit, Electronic Arts, ServiceNow, Autodesk, and Red Hat. Just so you can see those components for, uh, for IGV. All right. And, you know, what, what's, what else is probably in here also is uh, you've probably got Tableau, Data, uh, Paycom, Paycee, 
and, uh, and Zen. Uh, what's not in here would be, well, maybe some of the cybersecurity firms are in here, um, you know, but I, that's another area of software that's on fire. All right, we covered that. Now, let's talk about another software company that you may have heard of, NVIDIA. What, NVIDIA, that's another hardware company, right? I say they're a software company too, or at least software is driving their innovations as much as what they can do with amazing technology. Let's go to the recent keynote from Jensen Wong that he delivered in Cologne, Germany for the Gamescom conference. Um, obviously, he put on a big show with this ray tracing, this, this, uh, this magical effects of light and shadow that are done in real time, what would take a, a CGI studio in Hollywood months to do. He has the processing capacity to simulate light in real time, um, and it's just amazing. So here's, here's the GPU revolution. I've showed this chart or this graphic from them in many different forms, how they've reinvented Moore's Law with hardware, but it requires uh, computer scientists and software engineers to write to make this all work together. And so this is how their hardware and software solutions, their, their, what Jensen would call the full stack, um, you know, complete solution is reinventing Moore's Law and you're getting this exponential growth in, uh, in, in speed, efficiency, productivity. All right, I wanted to show you this graph because, so let me just explain. If you, if you didn't watch the keynote, you should find it on YouTube or just go and look at this slide deck and go through it at your own pace. But the, uh, Jensen's keynote is a, is a treat to watch too because he, uh, he's so excited about all this stuff and he explains it you know, in layman's terms. <laughs> he tells his engineers, I want things that that are things to look like things. And he go and his engineers go, yeah, I get it, boss. So uh, you know, that's been his goal with this ray tracing and racerization. So look at this graphic here. It's, it's got you know some jargon, acronyms, whatever. I, I don't want to need to explain it all, but this bottom part, um, racerization and ray tracing were the the innovations that they rolled out with this RTX platform, the Turing new the new GPU. And it's, it's what does light and shadows in real time that is just unbelievable. Um, and then compute, and compute is the, their architecture. They have a platform called CUDA, which stands for Compute Unified Device Architecture. And as Jensen says, um, architecture is what drives the innovations in gaming and AI. So it's still a hardware company. They build better architecture, but then they also, you know, they, they're, when they're creating machine learning and deep learning, there's also, you know, the software component. And uh, so to him, it's, you know, he ties all this together to create uh, th these, this fantastic hardware. So in this sense, NVIDIA is also a software company, also eating the world. Um, I've showed, uh, let me see, where is this graphic? Oh, yeah, here. Um, if you look at my screen again here, I just did a report on uh, artificial intelligence, and I love to show this graphic. This comes from Frost and Sullivan, which is a, uh, a research firm, kind of like Gartner, but they're from the UK, and you know they're doing some heavy research on AI, and this is something they put together about the evolution of smart cities. You know, when you look at the totality of what AI can create in terms of buildings, healthcare, transportation, infrastructure. Uh, education, security, and energy. To them, to them, this is a this is a you know one and a half trillion dollar um, market value by the year 2020, and you know so you can just imagine the the companies, the thousands of companies that are impacted this as either uh, customers or vendors in this sort of AI race which is software-based, and obviously hardware-based too. Uh, but this is how software is eating the world. So if you want a copy of this uh, report, this was my um, Artificial Intelligence Life 3.0 report. Yeah, it, was, uh, it was a Zach's Confidential Report, and if you want to get a copy, just email ultimate at zax.com and uh, tell them Cooker sent you. Okay, now let's bring in biotech because I 
because the theme of this is how both software and biotech are eating the world. Uh, a company I own called Bluebird Bio, they are um, they're involved in what are called CAR T therapies. And this is immuno oncology, teaching the body's immune system to fight its own cancer. They just partnered with a little uh, oncology company which specializes in using AI. So here, AI is meeting uh, immuno oncology and you know, these are two forces of the future. You could say that uh, I did a podcast last year just to have some fun uh, titled Bitcoin or CRISPR, which is the bigger disruptor? And I was kind of tongue in cheek about Bitcoin, but uh, you could really say that, yeah, CRISPR, the gene editing, editing technology and AI are, are going to transform the world. And they are, in a, in a sense, they're both uh, software based too. So here was this deal where AI comes to immuno oncology. I think it's a pretty big deal. All right, let me see if I covered all the stocks I wanted to talk about. Yeah, I think so. Um, so who's missed software besides me? <laughs> uh, David Einhorn um, has had a terrible year, terrible past year. Uh, I think he was, as of June, first half of the year, he was down 18% uh, in his funds, lost five and a quarter percent or 5.4% five and 5 in the second quarter. And uh, his performance is far worse than he could have imagined. And he's a, he's a value guy, too. So, of course, value guys ignored uh, these valuations or ignored software because of these valuations, you know, uh, paying, you know, 60 to 90 times for a, for a Salesforce or a Square. Now, well over that. Um, but Adobe and CRM have grown into their valuations, and, and as I've talked about, those companies were some of my favorites because they embed themselves in the Fortune 500, and make themselves indispensable to, uh, to those large businesses you know, with, with the platforms. All right, uh, so the, the begs the question, are we in a bubble? You've seen these incredible surges in stocks and it's just like is this the blow off top and is this the end well you know obviously a, con a correction could come at any, any time uh but the bull market is far from over so if we do get a, a somewhat of a decent pullback um that's where you want to look to pick up a lot of these software names for the long term uh, or or even to trade them uh, because software will continue to eat the world and be uh, just a dominant disruptive force, you know, creative destruction, uh, and, and, and across industries, obviously, but as it applies to biotech, uh, it could be extremely explosive too. All right, thanks for joining me in the kitchen.